My name is uh, Sam Twala. I'm with uh, Insu Aviation Solutions and Africa USC. Uh, Dale has already introduced uh, both companies, uh, Insu and, and Africa USC. And what I will be talking about today is uh, uh, operations for municipalities. And for the record, I'm not from any municipality. Uh, because uh, before we start seeing people bending stuff and thinking it's because I'm from the municipality, I'll be able to answer your questions and solve their problems. Uh, the, reason, the only reason why I am speaking to this topic, uh, municipality, one is because Sean asked me to. Secondly, is because I think this will be something quite interesting. I believe so. And before I start with my presentations, uh, today there hasn't been anyone who's taken aim at CAA, so I will do that. Uh, I'll s before I start my presentation, let me uh, quickly uh, try to give my understanding of Part 101 from CAA point of view. Uh, this is my opinion. I might be wrong. But uh, it's fine. Even if I'm wrong, it's still my opinion. If you look at uh, Part 01, uh, if you were here yesterday and you were following what uh, Prof. Filippo was, was explaining, uh, regulations in general, and was explaining what is happening worldwide uh, as far as these systems are concerned, you have uh, what he described as buy and fly, which are small stuff and less than 250 kilo uh, grams from some other countries you just buy and you fly, obviously within certain limitations. And it can get very complicated from there going forward. And there was a, a presentation from Matthew as well yesterday where he was talking about a, a drone, a, I think it's a weight of 1.4 tons. Now you can tell, for example, from a CA point of view, that can really get complicated because you have part 101, which is intended to regulate anything from buy and fly to something that weighs 1.4 ton. I mean, I, I don't think that could be an easy task for anyone. Uh, that's just my opinion anyway. I, if you look at uh, part one, how it's in relation to other civil aviation regulations, I, I would explain it as it was constructed in a way where <coughs> it's, it's approval by exclusion. I, I will explain what I mean with that. If you look at part 101, uh, what the Dale presented this morning, part 101 regulations, in general, you will read that uh, uh, you can operate VLOS and, or BVLOS, and then it has words like unless. And that unless had a good intention to it. And, and that unless was, in a way, try to introduce other complicated op operations such as BVLOS, such as night operations. And 101, uh, it was good enough to operate uh, to, to to allow operations which are uh, in VLOS space, and where we could everyone sort of say the risk is, uh, is, uh, is acceptable. And I'll explain in my presentation what I mean what I mean uh, 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 with when I talk about risk. Let's look at uh, legal legal requirements. <coughs> Currently. Today, if you look at the CA regulations, they don't distinguish between operations where uh, one is operating as a municipality or any other operator. It's part of 101. Whether you are a municipality, you are an uh, individual, whether you are an organization, regulations are the same or rules are the same. And I was started thinking, uh, is that correct? Is that the only way to go about it? Or possibly we could look at uh, if you look at ACAO, they have uh, what they call a state, a state flight. And state flight, they are regulated under different rules, not under ACAO. You know, you, you get to do some, this, you get some dispensation to do, not as you wish, but uh, not regulated under civil, under civil laws, if you can put it that way. And I was thinking now, would it make sense, or is it something to look at to say, for municipality, can we start looking at see them as a special type of operator. Because, oh, I'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, and a similar concept, I mean, we already have uh, police cars, ambulance, they are fitted with some lights, and they get right of way, 
and all those nice things. Like on my way here this morning, there were uh, some uh, scooters and, and black cars which pushed everyone out of the way because they wanted to, to pass. So something like that. I don't know if that would make sense for, for a drone operation. Yesterday, Prof. Filippo as well spoke of Sora, including, uh, I think, Mr. Zehwabi as well in his presentation. He, intro he introduced Sora. Uh, you, you can read the slides, but what I'll uh, uh, look at is last two uh, sentences here. Sora, as a, as a concept, as a principle, now the question, uh, what was the Sora, how it works is, uh, it could be used to evaluate safety risk involved with operation of UAS of any mass, any size, or performance, and if you want to operate just anywhere. That's, that's how SORA is built. And, and uh, I believe this will be very beneficial to CA and operators going forward. Uh, SORA, if you don't know what the SORA is, uh, or those who were not here yesterday, SORA is a specific operations risk assessment. That's what it stands for. Last bullet, the methodology is based on the principle of a holistic total system safety risk-based assessment model used to evaluate the risk uh, related to a given operation. Basically, that's what it is. What, in, in short, what does that mean is you don't only look at how capable your aircraft is, but you also have to look at how capable is your pilot. You also look at the area of operation. Where, is, where are you operating? Because it doesn't help where, where you have... a uh, a very capable aircraft, and uh, where you're operating, because uh, I like an uh, example which uh, Prof. Philippe sometimes makes is, in main aviation, airlines today, you have aircraft which are certified with a valid C of A, but they still crash. So it's not only about the aircraft, you have to look at the system entirely. On the practical consideration, this is some of the questions which I was asking myself. Municipality, if you look at 101, we have ROC, which defines what the operator looks like and uh, with the requirements as well. Now, the question which I was asking myself is, if a municipality is an operator, looking at 101, it means municipal municipality now, we have to look at them as an aviation organization. As aviation organization, is it a, a corporate or a commercial. And if you look at the differences, the corporate, the definition of a corporate, I got this out of a, a Civil Aviation Act, it means a non-commercial operation or use of aircraft by a company for a carriage of passengers or goods as an aid to conduct, aid to the conduct of the company business flown by a, a professional pilots employed by, employed to fly the aircraft. So that, that is the definition of a, a corporate. Or the other option would be, instead of municipality being an operator, how about outsourcing the air service to anyone else who, because we have a lot of, uh, we could potentially in the future have a lot of uh, operators. So how about then municipality, what they retain is they could have a dispatcher, they could have a control center, and they have operators anywhere they want to have operators. Is, is it something that is possible within 101? And when I look at it, it's possible. It's possible because the, the operator would be an operator, which would be an aviation organization, and there will be no commercial airspace, air uh, uh, commercial airspace, and they would have uh, post holders. So perhaps for, for municipality, what could be the best way would be to outsource the air service they could still retain perhaps the, the dispatch and, and the control center. Talking about SORA, this is just an introduction to SORA, uh, obviously not the, the holistic picture, just uh, an intro to that. Like any other operations, how you look at an operation, you have, you have to define CONOPS, the concept of operation. And the reason why you have to define the concept of operation, that simply guides you on how to operate safely. And what is it that is possible under part 101, and what is it that is excluded where operator has to do a little bit more. 
And in, in short, there's a, a holistic risk model which is defined under, under SORA. What SORA says is you have to look at do uh, hazard identification, obviously related to your, to your CONOPS. Once that is done, do hazard uh, identification, which is obviously coming out of or related to your, to your operation. Once that is done, then look at generic threats. Generic threats could be anything outside of the operation, like, like weather. You know, where you operate, how weather looks like, and anything that is external to your, to your operation. Once that is done, now you have to build harm barriers to the hazards which you identified at the beginning of the process. Once that is done, now look at threats barriers from what you've identified, uh, uh, from hazards which you, you, you identified at this, at this stage. Then you're going to have two possibilities, in my opinion at least. You'll end up with what I would term a standard scenario or non-standard uh, operation. What is a standard scenario is, every time when you run this process, CONOPS, you do your holistic risk model, you're going to end up with similar risk all the time. That will give you a standard uh, scenario. And what would possibly mean to CA is you don't have to go to CAA all the time when you want to change your location, when you want to perhaps get a different aircraft. Because every time you run the process from here, the risk will always be the same. And then now you can start standardizing the compliance to such an operation. And that could be a firefighting or emergency services. I just picked uh, five examples here. Uh, at the end of this slide, the next slide is the last slide where I will show you a video of what I'm talking about. And what you, I would ask you to have in mind is, as that video plays, look at the risk involved in such operation. And you ask yourself to say, if I move that operation from one location to the other, will the risk be different? And if the answer is no, then it means I can replicate that type of operation anywhere else because the risk will always be the same starting from the uh, concept of operation, which is very important at the beginning, and running through the process. And you have, uh, at the bottom here, things like law enforcement. If you look at law enforcement, let's say if uh, a police, they are trying to chase a criminal using a drone. Now there's a lot involved. That cannot be the same all the time. It depends where, it depends how, it depends what are you flying. So this will always at least require one to start from here, and run from left to the right. This is the video I was talking about. I got this from YouTube, by the way. I will, I will stop with here, and, and my last comment would be, if you look at that operation on its own, uh, and look at CA mandate. CA mandate is to protect uh, airspace users. Uh, secondly, is to protect people on the ground. And lastly, to protect uh, infrastructure, which is on the ground. Sometimes it could be in the air as well. Now, if you look at that operation, I mean, what kind of, that operation, what type of risk does it pose under all those three elements which I'm talking about? And when you run that process, which I was explaining earlier, from left to right, I'm pretty much sure if you look at that aircraft, it's, uh, it's obviously hooked on some string with that hose, meaning it's not really a threat to other airspace users. 
one. Two, looking at the infrastructure. Uh, the only threat could be the infrastructure being that building which is on fire. I'm not sure if uh, what will cause more damage, fire, than, than the uh, drone itself. And if you look at if there's a building which is on fire, most probably there wouldn't be any, be any people around most probably. So that's how you look at the risk. And, and as I said, if you look at this type of operation, uh, uh, looking at uh, how you, you run or you do your assessment through a uh, sort of process, now you are able to look at the risk. And once you are done with risk, you could replicate this type of operation almost everywhere and anywhere. I'm just making an example with fire, but obviously you can look at all other municipal services in general. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs>